Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Um, today we're going to be making some snack sticks with some goose and some other ingredients. Uh, first, just to get this out of the way, go ahead, check out uh, our channel, hit the subscribe button. We have some pretty awesome content from last season and um, have some newer equipment for video editing and recording. So should be pretty good here moving forward and don't forget to hit the like button. Okay, so here's what I have. We're gonna be making some snack sticks. I have some LEM smoked casings and some backwoods snack stick seasoning. I have probably two and a half, three pounds of goose breast here, which I've marinated already. I kind of had another plan for them, but I I marinated them for that plan, but I don't think that should affect it too much. And I've got a pork butt here. Um, my thought here is to kind of have the pork butt to help mix some fat in with the goose breast. And I'm hoping to use all of this up and probably have a pretty close, maybe just a little heavy on the pork. So I might not go quite full with the pork, but probably try to go about a 50-50 mix. And I'm gonna run it through this grinder that I've never used yet, so we'll see how that goes. Got that from Cabela's as a Christmas gift net last year, so. Uh, I'm gonna go get my parts for my grinder, which are in the freezer, and I'll be just back in just a second to explain why they're in the freezer. Okay, I got my parts out of the freezer, and the reason that you um, freeze this stuff, I've just kinda here say this is kind of a trial run for me making this, but um, is it won't render the fat in the goose meat and kind of apparently that can kind of make some stuff taste funny and act weird. So what I'm going to start doing is, well actually first, I have these black disposable gloves. I'm going to be handling this meat a lot, so it just kind of seems a little sanitary if I wore something like this. And also um, if you've ever had a whole bunch of meat on your hands for a long period of time, it kind of makes your hands feel funny. I'm going to cut this up into pieces, manageable to fit down into my grinder, but yet uh, not too big to, I don't know. I'm just going to just kind of chunk them up, put them down in there. This meat is half frozen and that will help, help grind it. Start off with a piece of pork just to see how it goes. Okay, as you can tell, I use kind of a medium fine, the medium fine uh, nozzle on the grinder. I'm going to run back through this stuff with the fine one. But what I'm going to do as I grind this is I'm going to I'm going to grind a little bit of pork and then a little bit of goose, just so I can uh, kind of get it mixed up easy because you're going to want this mixed up really nice. And this goose should be really easy to cut into strips, just right down the center, and that should feed really nice into the grinder. Nice little strips like that, they'll feed right down into there. <laughs> Quick thing, try to do your best to watch out for BBs in this because that might screw your grinder up. Um, what I would recommend, what I've heard of some people doing when they do some stuff like this is run like a magnet detector over it. Um, I don't have one so I'm just going to have to keep an eye on what I'm doing here. <laughs> Okay, I'm probably a little bit heavy on the pork, but I have just a little bit left. I'm just going to trim off some of the fat pieces and probably call it good for the pork butt. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the finer attachment on this, run everything back through again. 
and I'm going to start mixing it up by hand just to get rid of some of these lighter and darker spots. Okay, I've got my fitting up here changed to the fine setting. Start running this through and mixing it up. Okay, we've got this ground up nice and fine now. And we're ready to start our mixing process. I'm gonna try to get as much of this meat out of here as I can so it's less to clean. Okay, I think I've got about 10 pounds of meat here, maybe just a little shy of that. So it's going to take me about two packets of this. I would recommend putting this stuff on a scale and checking it out that way, but I think it'll be okay. Um, we'll see. Two packets and we're supposed to dissolve the, the cure and the seasoning in water. So I'm going to dump them both and it's five ounces of water per each five pounds, so 10 ounces or this amount of meat, and then let us rest in the fridge. Tomorrow we'll come back and start stuffing. That means about a cup and a quarter. I'd ask Google how to convert ounces into cups, but open these both up, dump the seasoning in, and then there should be a little baggie of cure, yeah. Okay. Kind of like that. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit without trying to spill any. And then I'm going to get some water. You can get a whisk and kind of I'm gonna take my whisk and Kind of stir this up a little bit, get it good and dissolved. Okay, I'm gonna dump this in on my seasoning, my seasoning into my meat. And then I'm gonna, by hand, I'm gonna mix it up really good and put it in the fridge. I'm gonna try to, to spread it around as I pour it is my goal here. I think that'll help me mix it up a little bit easier. Take your hands and whatever kind of motion, if you want to kind of scoop it from the bottom and flip it, or it doesn't matter. I hope it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is my first time making these sticks, so. Okay, I'm gonna Pat it down nice and even like this, and then I'm gonna cover it with either saran wrap or tin foil, and then I'm gonna set it in the fridge so that the top of the meat doesn't dry out. And then tomorrow we will uh, pull this out, start stuffing tubes, and get the tubes in the smoker. Okay, everybody, it's the next day, and I better make sure I'm in frame. Look here, these are the 19 millimeter and they don't fit on here. I can't slide them on here, so that's not going to work. This is a jerky gun that I borrowed from a buddy I don't really know much about. I didn't know what size that this was, so... The wife's going to stop and hopefully pick me up something a different size and try again. So if you, if you can, make sure that you know what size a tube that you have on your jerky gun so that you know what size casings that you need got back with the okay the wife got back with the new casings and they were made for uh, breakfast length so they're not gonna work but I did figure out how to make these a little bit better they're a little tighter packed now just kind of got to squeeze them around with your hand but I think it's gonna turn out okay um, yeah make sure so you don't go through the same trouble as I did that you have the right nozzle for the casing that you're getting. But we're gonna get some more casings here and keep on going. Also, I don't know what kind of jerky gun that this is. I do not recommend it though. Um, when I push the meat up in there, it 
like unthreads itself or it comes off the threads on the front and also I'm getting meat back behind the plunger. So yeah, if you know what this kind of jerky gun is, don't get it. It's not good. But I have to use it, that's all I got. Okay, after all the struggle, I borrowed a better gun from a buddy and uh, it's gonna work a lot nicer. My uh, casings actually fit on the end and it's made out of metal, not plastic, so it shouldn't fall apart on me. So let's get it stuffed and see what we get out of it. I did see that that plastic one is for sale on Amazon. Highly do not recommend for doing this at least. Maybe if you want to ice a cake or make some cookies or something like that, but I wouldn't use any meat in it. That was my sarcasm. Now that I have this set up well and I have the hair out of it, I would recommend taking this end and tying it off so that you get a good packing or twisting it or tie it off, do something. A little knot like that will do. Now I'm just going to kind of hold pressure on it with my fingers here and uh, just kind of let it get good and packed but don't let it burst. I'm just going to kind of let it go on the counter here. Don't mind my mess, this has gotten messy. I'd recommend laying down some newspapers or something so you don't have to clean up quite as much. Oh man, this is so much nicer. Just like that, I got one done already. Piece of cake. My goal was to make these as long as my smoker was wide, but with the amount of casing that I can fit on here, it's not gonna work like that. So I'm just gonna have to make it work on the smoker. However it works, it works. I know this video is getting a little bit longer, but this is my first experience of doing this and I wanted to share it. Okay, after that long, miserable process. Just kidding, it wasn't that bad. Especially with that new gun, um, got a nice pile. It's about what, eight-ish, ten-ish pounds of sticks looks like. They're not all the same length as, which is what I'm going for. Well, what I was hoping for, but doesn't quite always work out the way you want it to I guess but uh, I'm gonna make sure all the ends of these are good and sealed I'm gonna tie them or pinch them off and then I'm gonna throw them on the sm for well I'm gonna put them on at 180 until they reach 165 internal temp pull them off and then drop them in ice water to shrink up the casing so I'm excited to see how it turns out Alright, I've got the smoker all loaded up here. The pit boss. Got her all loaded up. Got my temperature probes in, one on the top rack and one on the bottom rack, kind of on opposite sides of the grill, so I can make sure that they're getting cooked all the way. But I got the temperature set at 180, and this smoker's pretty sweet. Uh, it'll notify me once my internal temp reaches 165, so I'm gonna just check on them every little bit periodically and maybe roll them around but next time you see me I should have some delicious snack sticks after this long process it wasn't that bad though it was kind of fun little update here it's starting to get a little closer start giving these a roll uh, maybe even flip this one Ugh. Flip that one that's drooping down and I give these a make sure that they're all getting smoke and all getting hot on all sides. Okay, everything has reached temperature. These are looking really good. Heard that you're supposed to drop these into ice water to shrink the casings down, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. They're still nice and tightly packed, so 
I'm gonna get these off here, get them inside, let them cool down a little bit. And then I'm gonna try one and let you know how it is. Hopefully it turned out pretty good. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right, my first look at them. There's some that are burnt. They were directly over the heat source. So maybe next time I'd make sure that some of them aren't straight over that. But all the rest of them that weren't right over it, they just turned out perfect is what it looks like. They feel just like a, just like something you'd buy at the store. So they cool down a little bit. I'm gonna try them out. Here we go. Casing is just still a little bit hard in some spots. That was kind of a darker piece. Um, tastes pretty good. I don't know. Doesn't doesn't taste like any other kind of beef stick or anything I've had. Tastes good. Not the best thing I've ever had by any means, but pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, yeah, I'd say to make sure that you get a good meat gun. Make sure you get the right size of casings for your gun and use that backwoods kit because this seasoning tastes pretty good. Um, follow the instructions on there and that's what I did. I don't think they could steer you wrong with it. The pit boss also does great. Um, that's Sorry episode kind of got long but had those struggles so anyways until next time.